ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to varun beverages limited's earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Varun Beverages Q1 CY 2024 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Ravi Jaipuria, chairman of the company. Mr. Varun Jaipuria, executive vice chairman and whole time director, and Mr. Raj Gandhi, group CFO and whole time director of the company. We'll initiate the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we'll have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the results presentation shared with you earlier. I will now request Mr. Ravi Jaipuria to make his opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone and thank you for joining us on our earning conference call. I hope all of you had the opportunity to go through our results presentation that provides details of our operation and financial performance for the first quarter ended 31st March 2024. In spite of the delay in Holy Festival for by 17 days resulted in delayed seasonality cycle we are pleased to report a reasonably strong overall operation and financial performance in the first quarter of the year. We achieved the consolidated sales revenue growth of 10.9% with a breakup of volume growth of 7.2% and net realization per case growth of 3.5% in quarter one. Reflecting an improved product mix in India and higher contribution from international markets overall. EBITDA increased by 23.9% year on year and PAT increased by 24.9%. Further, our sustainability efforts, including the focus on reducing sugar content, removal of cor corrugated pads in packaging, and light weighting of packaging material, have started showing results in increase in gross margins. During last quarter, we also established our sustainability report in accordance with the GRI reporting standards. We are committed to transparency and accountability in, in our sustainability reporting practices. And we believe that using the GRI standards allows us to provide comprehensive and comparative information to our stakeholders. To fulfill our growth commitment in our core market in India, we commenced three greenfield facilities located in Supa, Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh, and Khurda, Odisha. This expansion is designed to meet the rising demand for beverages in India and support our long-term growth trajectory. Our greenfield plant in DRC is expected to start by the next quarter. A significant highlight of the quarter was successful completion of, completion of strategic acquisition of the beverage company Bevco in South Africa. This move has notably expanded our footprint and fortified our presence across several dynamic markets in the African region. <laughs> Furthermore, Warren Beverage in Morocco a wholly owned subsidiary has entered in an exclusive snacks appointment agreement to manufacture and market and package Cheetos into Morocco by May 2025. This agreement complements our existing distribution of PepsiCo snack portfolio, making another step forward in our strong symbolic partnership. In nutshell, we have additionally fueled three growth engines 
which will gradually and consistently contribute to revenue and profit profitability growth in the company. First growth engine is South Africa's combined territory with Lesotho, Isitwani, Namibia, Botswana, Mozambique, and Madagascar. Second growth engine is entry into new territory of DRC where PepsiCo is not present at all as of now. The commercial production here from our new state of the art green plant is expected to start from the next quarter. The third growth engine is entry into snack food production by March May 2025 in Morocco. I would now like uh, now invite Mr. Gandhi to provide the highlights of the operational and financial performance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone joining us today. Let me provide an overview of the financial performance for the quarter ended 31st March 2024. Revenue from operations adjusted for excise GST saw a healthy 10.9% year-on-year increase to the level of 43,173 million in Q1 of uh, calendar year 2024. Consolidated sales revenue reported a growth of 7.2%, reaching 240.2 million cases in Q1 of 2024. This increases uh, with increases of 4.4% and 21.9% in India and international markets respectively. During Q1 of the calendar year 2024, the consolidated net realization per case rose by 3.5% to the level of 179.7, supported by an improved product mix in India and a higher contribution from international markets, which command higher realization per case. CSG constituted 71%, juice 7%, and packaged drinking water 22% of the total sales volume in the quarter one of the CY 2024. Our gross margins improved significantly, rising by 385 basis points to the level of 56.3% from the earlier level of 52.4%. This increase was largely driven by our focus on reducing sugar content and the lightweight packaging material, incidentally also meeting our sustainability initiative. Along with the benefit from reduced PET prices, which contributed to this improvement. Approximately 46% of our consolidated sales volumes come from low sugar or no sugar products, reflecting our commitment to meeting the evolving preferences of all consumers. This strategic focus now only aligns with the consumer trends but also optimizes our cost structure by reducing sugar the cost and enhancing overall efficiency. These efforts have had a tangible impact on our financial performance with EBITDA increasing by 23.9% to the level of 9,887.6 million year on year and the EBITDA margin improving by 240 basis points to the level of 22.9% in quarter one of 2024. The above improvement of 240 basis points is in spite of rise in fixed costs associated with the acquisition of the new territories and commissioning of new greenfield plants for the season as these new capacities begin to contribute to our performance. We expect these costs to be better absorbed, enhancing our financial efficiency moving forward. Depreciation increased by 8.9% in Q1 of uh, calendar year 2024 on account of capitalization of assets and the establishment of new production facilities. That is, uh, for reference purposes, Kota and Jabalpur, which were capitalized during the last year, and Supa, which was capitalized, which is capitalized during this quarter. Finance costs increased by 49.7 percent, primarily due to higher debt for acquisition and capex, as well as increased borrowing costs. The capex for uh, these three plants is uh, already done, barring a bit for DRC, which is pending. And on the other side, we, the uh, the cost is gone up. Last year, uh, same quarter, the average cost of borrowing was 7.7 percent, which this year is 8 percent. On the debt front, we expect to optimize majority of the incremental amortize the majority of the incremental debt taken during the year 
for BEPCO acquisition as well as for CAPEX in the next couple of months. That grew by 24.9% to the level of 5,479.8 million in Q1 of uh, calendar year 2024 from the level of 4,385 million to Q1 of, uh, in Q1 of 2023, driven by volume growth and enhanced profit margins. Coming to an update on our growth initiatives, we have successfully commissioned three new greenfield production facilities in India, significantly enhancing our production capacities. In Supa Maharashtra uh, on 25th January 2024, with an investment of uh, 10,000 million. In Gorakhpur, UP on 13th April 2024, with an investment of 11,000 million. And in Kurda, Orissa on 30th April 2024, with an outlay of 7,000 million. We also have set up backward integration facilities at all the three above mentioned uh, greenfield plants taking the total number of integrated plants to 13, that is the plants with the backward integration facilities. These investments are poised to support our long-term growth objectives as well as profitability. Additionally, a forthcoming capex of uh, 4,000 million for our DRC unit will uh, enhance our capacity expansion strategy in African Reason. Furthermore, the, we finalized the strategic acquisition of BEPCO, expanding our footprint into new and dynamic markets. We also secured an agreement to produce and package Cheetos in Morocco. As we move into peak season, the growth outlook stays no way different from the past uh, few years, uh, and the performance given uh, the strong heat waves prevailing across India during the summer quarter, where we are. A strategic investments in enhancing production capabilities and making new acquisitions have significantly strengthened our global presence. These initiatives have established a solid platform for sustained growth in the foreseeable future. On that note, I come to an end of the opening remarks and would like to now ask the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abneesh Roy from Novama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and uh, congrats on strong margin. Uh, my first question is on uh, the outlook. Uh, so June quarter, clearly your base is quite uh, favorable. It, uh, it was soft. Plus, uh, we also have the heat wave. And uh, uh, is there any benefit also from uh, the election-related uh, rallies, etc.? So I wanted to get a sense on uh, how you see June quarter. I understand uh, guidance will be difficult, but uh, do you think that... Uh, much stronger double date growth should come back in the Indian business volume growth. Well, we can't tell you exactly what growth will come back because half the quarter is already over. So, as you see, the heats are strong and soft drink sells when it's a stronger heat. And we have the advantage this quarter of Ramzan being moving uh, towards March, which hurt us a little bit in the March quarter last year. So, it looks very positive and I think we should have a good quarter. And uh, one related question was uh, on the overall market also. So, uh, Campacola in FI24 uh, has done around 400 crore sales. If you could tell us any market, uh, any kind of in impact or uh, it's mostly uh, the market has expanded. And second to your own business, if you could tell us quick commerce, e-commerce and modern trade. Uh, in uh, uh, March quarter, how was it this year versus the uh, same uh, quarter last year? Yeah, uh, see, the e-business in our uh, category is very small. So, we, to that extent, do not track. But yes, uh, the growth is uh, there. And uh, I read your report on uh, Reliance also. Uh, they have done a, a good work. But what we are saying about our numbers, we definitely are looking very healthy. 
and the reasons you explained heat wave elections and uh, low base of the last year and also the capacity which we have already increased by adding these three plants and to make use of this and uh, you know we are amidst uh, actually making all the time arrangements how to meet the requirement and we don't go out of stock actually so thanks uh, that's all for my side thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of parsi pantaki from iifl securities please go ahead uh hi sir uh, i was just looking at your uh, uh, subsidiary sales that is the console minus the stand alone that has grown uh, for this quarter uh, roughly by about 30% yoy so what is leading the growth uh, in the international and secondly uh, in the international on a overall basis what is the volume growth a uh, volume growth internationally as stated earlier is 21% and uh, uh, the in fact india uh, you know is uh, actually issue, would not have uh, any way different and uh, why it is lower is because uh, holi started late the calendar actually doesn't coincide uh, uh, you know the festival or the summer uh, calendar ran was earlier and the ramadan these uh, do not coincide uh, with the, the uh you know the calendar or the quarter which we follow for our reporting purposes but uh, everything is intact and this 21% growth uh, any flavor on which geographies are higher than the average lower than the average uh well uh, morocco always leads zimbabwe leads and uh, they have already become too large and good percentage increase in the larger territories makes the impact understood understood sir uh, also uh, could you give us an idea what is the uh, capex on a cash flow basis that you are estimating for calendar uh, 24 uh, see uh, as uh, 3003 uh, 3600 capex which was uh, already you know we had informed uh, uh, everyone 2400 out of which was already done in the last financial year itself out of 1200 broadly it's done yes. only small portion maybe 200 crore in uh, drc is left and maybe small amount in india most of which is already done okay so now, uh, 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 per se our uh, our effort is to amortize the money which uh, we have uh, borrowed <laughs> so capex is done now we are going to the next phase right right understood so uh, most of your capex is done and would i be right in assuming that let's say next calendar that is calendar 25 also our capex would not be more than like 1000 to 1500 crore would that be a reasonable assumption uh let's wait till june because the kind of growth uh, you know we expect if we get it uh, it has to be more okay okay understood sir yeah that's all thanks uh, thanks and all the best thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all the participants in the conference kindly limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question please rejoin the queue thank you the next question is from the line of jay doshi from kotak please go ahead hi good afternoon and thanks for opportunity now if i were to look at uh, you know uh, other than june quarter last year for the remaining three quarters you your volume growth in india business of about 20% whereas last year june quarter it was barely about 2% so when we look at this june should we think about uh, you know at 17 18% uh, volume potential volume growth that you lost last june and about 10 20% over and above that so is the demand environment conducive and is your supply side capacity expansion uh, work uh, was it commissioned on time for you to be able to capture what you know the math indicates which is like close to 30% volume growth in june quarter jay i appreciate the parameters which you have defined i no way differ from you but let's keep the fingers crossed it's ongoing quarter And but our capacity is enhanced, and and the plants were in time, so we are okay capacity wise. Uh, that that's very helpful. Second is now that you've made some progress on the food business, would it be possible to give us some color in terms of you know, uh, you know, at a right scale, uh, what would be the profitability and uh, you know return ratios? How would it compare versus the beverages business, you know, on the food side? 
I think it's a bit too early. We are only going to start the first plant next year. But food business is as good or better than the beverage business. Uh, I'm assuming this is return on capital, right? Given that capex yeah. would be much lower. Yeah, than yeah. Beverage. yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I'll get back in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Shah from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, I guess a couple of questions maybe uh, from me. Uh, the first one on, uh, I mean, you've done great work on uh, the gross margin expansion through multiple initiatives. So I just wanted to understand uh, the sustainability of this and uh, would you at all uh, like to sort of revise your margin guidance? Uh, the guidance stays the same, uh, Anand, uh, as we have given earlier. Uh, we have specified the reasons, you know, one of, we keep on getting these and uh, which always help us. But in the long run, the mark, you know, guidance we should take just the same because uh, we do not know the weather conditions, we do not know sometimes uh, the competitive scenario, etc. So I think uh, the margin guidance which we have given in the past, uh, for the long run, we should stay with that only. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, this one, last one, um, um, on the balance sheet side, I mean, um, uh, can you share the uh, debt number there uh, for, for the, the, the current quarter, given that you expanded on the BEPCO payment and all, uh, so that we know as to what is the repayment and how it goes out? Uh, we have made a payment of 1260 for BEPCO, and uh, uh, out of 1200 capex, which was to be done in this quarter, uh, out of uh, that, about 1000 or 950 is already done, and minus the profit of last quarter and uh, 45 days. Exact numbers for the quarter we will not be able to get. Uh, so, look, I mean, we will be reaching, and we also have given a guidance that uh, in a couple of months, uh, these two additional debts will be amortized and we will be doing all endeavor to reach at the 31st December debt position. Got it. Got it. And uh, I mean, you had indicated during the acquisition you may explore uh, 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 some structure sort of to uh, work out in South Africa in terms of uh, uh, the, the payment and all. Uh, is, is, is that something which is ongoing? Uh, see, the uh, structure was that on the CapEx, which, uh, you know, you know, we have gone uh, solo, which we have already announced, 100% equity yeah. is with us, minus uh, ESOPs, which to the staff we had to give, we have announced that 100% is with the company only. So that uh, first structure is very clear, already announced. However, we made uh, some state borrowing, uh, you know, remitting money from here versus borrowing something at locally. Uh, because uh, the cost difference between uh, India and uh, borrowing in local currency in South Africa was not much, uh, 150 basis point difference only, which gives us a big insurance on the, uh, you know, the exchange fluctuation in managing our balance sheet. So some money was borrowed there. We have done only debt equity or structure or location only to this exchange. Got it. And one last one, if I may, I mean, we're starting to see, sorry, are we starting to see a rock star in your presentation and then we drink, so should we expect the one this year? Uh, see, Anand, this is uh, what we got, uh, you know, in South Africa because they were doing a small portion of uh, uh, rock star there. So it was good when we are making a consolidated brand presentation to include that. So okay. India, uh, we'll have to wait for some time. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devanshu Bansal from NK Global. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on uh, good margin execution in the uh, past quarter. Uh, sir, you indicated that uh, summer season has started off well. I uh, wanted to check if you can uh, call out uh, the utilization levels of your plants uh, uh, for the month of April, as in how are we trending on that front? You want the one word? Uh, about 100%. Okay, okay. Uh, that's really encouraging to hear, sir. Uh, 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 from uh, depreciation perspective, Mr. Gandhi, uh, as some of the plants were uh, commissioned during the quarter, uh, uh, what is the expected uh, run rate for depreciation going into the coming quarters, uh, if you can help us? Uh, 
basically, you know, how we measure is as a percentage of uh, revenue. If uh, you see the percentage year after year on the, you know, full utilization basis is coming down and we feel to maintain the same trend and uh, the appreciation as a part of revenue, uh, I don't think will change uh, this year also. Got it, sir. And lastly, from my end, uh, what is the uh, expected contribution from uh, South African market uh, in terms of revenue EBITDA uh, uh, for this year? Is it like broadly similar uh, to the matrices shared uh, during acquisition or we are seeing some improvement there? Uh, it's too early for improvement. I think we've just taken over uh, and it's off-season now in South Africa already started. So I think give us a couple of quarters before we start really uh, giving you numbers for South Africa. But it's a great acquisition. I think we'll do well. And uh, just give us a little bit of time. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for taking the question, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Soman from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, two questions. Uh, firstly, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the increased capacity and, and your plans for Gatorade and Kindle? And uh, secondly, um, uh, again, in terms of South Africa, <clears throat> any sort of color uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the numbers for the next uh, year will be super useful. Thank you. Okay, uh, so three questions. One is on uh, Gatorade, second is on Creamtel, third is on Webco. So, uh, yes, uh, Gatorade, uh, the focus uh, from PepsiCo has come, uh, you know, uh, by way of price correction, the pack size correction, and uh, allowing us to produce for more than one plant. So the efforts are on, but it's uh, still at a very niche stage. And uh, at this moment, a small change will not make a difference, but it is a product which... Uh, is a uh, little futuristic. And also, one more thing, uh, they have also launched with a formulation with the zero cal uh, Gatorade. So it's a very promising product, but we'll have to wait for this. Same is true for uh, Creambell. Creambell actually, uh, the capacity announcement, which, uh, uh, you know, uh, was delayed and it did not happen on the very first day like uh, other uh, lines at these plants. So there, of course, is again a promising uh, this thing. And but it's doing well, and uh, we are seeing huge growth, and whatever capacity we are able to produce, we are being able to sell, even with the enhanced capacity. Thank you. And uh, Aditya, coming back on uh, Bevco thing, Bevco, uh, you know, there are five plants which are, uh, you know, already operational working. And uh, by September, October, when the season starts, uh, we have to make certain improvements to enhance the capacity, one side. And in the meantime, uh, the share of PepsiCo, which is a better contributor of top line and uh, bottom line, to interchange a share from own brands to the Pepsi, enhance the profitability. And uh, then, uh, uh, you know, once we are ready, then assess where increasing capacity by adding lines or by adding plants and uh, you take uh, you know action those things and go ahead on that that's right yeah. thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Ungar Gugadare from Shri Investments please go ahead yeah am I audible sir yes yes sir my question was regarding, uh, I know it's been only a few months you have taken our website, but uh, could you share some vision on that, where you want to take it, what kind of size it can become in terms of overall portfolio for working businesses, and what uh, stages you want to... Yeah, sure. Uh, see, uh, Echo... Yeah. Okay, South Africa is a huge market. Per cap is one of the highest, anything between 170, 80, or 200, and uh, matured. Where is 250 plus. Oh, the, I'm corrected here, 250 plus per cap uh, consumption in that country. And uh, PepsiCo is a very, very meager. If we see in the industry, the share of Pepsi is as low as 1.8%. If we, even if we say, 
uh, see it between uh, uh, Pepsi and Coke, uh, that's uh, the global brands, the share is 2.7% only. So huge uh, upside and uh, we have in the past, uh, you know, our track had been good. Uh, Zimbabwe, where we had gone, uh, PepsiCo's share zero last year, as we have uh, mentioned in past calls, achieved 71%. Zambia, we did this thing. Morocco, we have repeated this performance. And uh, hopefully, uh, we will be doing it. We have to give us some time to, uh, you know, correct our act and uh, put the act in order and uh, uh, definitely make it uh, few folds at least. Okay, so like uh, volume volume wise, uh, it is lesser than India, but the realization would be much higher, right? Or kept is much higher, yes. No, I think uh, you know we are still too early for South Africa answers. You know, I think give us a little bit of time to understand the full market. Give us a quarter or two quarter. Let us then give you the right. Uh, but it's a huge market with a huge scope. And we are working on it. Okay. Uh, in terms of Indian growth this season, uh, you said that uh, Holy Festival was delayed by 17 days, resulting in. Uh, yeah, you are not uh, audible clearly, please. Yeah. Uh, you were saying that uh, it was delayed, uh, Holy Festival was delayed by 17 days. That's why there was some uh, loss yeah. of. The, uh, so, like. Uh, 17 days the delay was for India or Holi. See, what that happened? It was for the first quarter because Holi was late this year and Ramadan was earlier, so it affected the season partly. So that benefit we will get in this uh, this quarter. So there will be a spillover of sales, right? Because of in the current quarter. Yeah, uh, basically when we are saying the, uh, you know, the model stays the same and uh, the, the calendar doesn't come inside, uh, summer calendar versus uh, the uh, reporting uh, quarter. So, yes, there will be uh, some shifting overlapping from last quarter to this quarter because summer is shifted towards uh, April. Okay, just one wanted one clarification that uh, all the three plans which you just told, uh, all of them were uh, working, uh, operating uh, in the current quarter. They are all operative in uh, April, from April onwards. Okay, and what was the utilization in the last quarter, Jan to March, for all three of them? Uh, this, uh, two of them have started operating only in April. Yeah. Okay, and the one day many, uh, which started in January, I think, right? The one which was started last quarter, January, February, and not the full season month, those are part of your off-season, but as we were heading towards uh, the season, uh, every plant is uh, being utilized uh, more or less around 100%. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumant Kumar from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. So, uh, in this quarter, the gross margin expansion, uh, the two factors you were talking about, lightweight packaging. Uh, so, can you talk about how much percentage of total sales volume we have on lightweight packaging and then further room of growth? Uh, uh, and also talking about reducing sugar content, and you talked about 46% of our consolidated sales is uh, from uh, Can you speak a little slowly and just repeat? Uh, I couldn't hear you properly. There's something not very clear on the line. Uh, Mr. Kumar, uh, I would request you to use your handset, sir. Your voice is muffled. Yeah. So uh, the first question is uh, when you talk about the low uh, or lightweight packaging. So can you talk about how much percentage of total portfolio is lightweight packaging currently, and how much uh, how much it is going to increase from current level? And the second question is for the low sugar content, we are talking about 46% of the total uh, consolidated sales volume is from a uh, low sugar content. Uh, so can you talk about from here, can you increase this percentage? Uh, well, uh, you know, it's uh, difficult to give the number for future history, but uh, for the past, if you are interested, uh, we have uh, worked in detail and compared it, uh, uh, you know, for, from 2010 to 2023. In page number 15 of our quarterly result presentation put on website, 
and we have also given this uh, for various preform for 600 ml, 750 ml, 1 liter, 1.25 liter, and 2.25 liter, as well as reduction in the grammes for the uh, closers. So these two things are already uh, provided in much detail in page number 15. And the scope for future basically will depend upon the technology changes, uh, etc., which will support uh, uh, the uh, weight reduction. So as of now, the position is given. Okay. And what about the sugar content to 46% portfolio? Uh, as, uh, I have in my opening remarks stated, as of now, 46% of our total portfolio is either zero sugar or low sugar. And uh, actually, uh, South Africa has helped us a lot because they are, uh, in that country, they, we have already reached about 90% of uh, the portfolio, 89% precisely, which is uh, less sugar or low sugar. And uh, the, another country which is following the same is Morocco. And in India also, we are doing a lot of efforts. And uh, we have uh, now our, in our launches, Mirinda, 7-Up, uh, uh, other than like, PepsiCo, PepsiCo, Pepsi uh, Max and uh, low sugar, that string. So we are developing, uh, you know, more and more. Uh, uh, Gatorade, we mentioned, uh, uh, you know, new launch, which PepsiCo has given us formulation with zero sugar. So effort uh, is there and constant effort is there to, you know, reduce the sugar content. And this will help uh, our gross margin going there. Uh, the, the, any profit, uh, this is sharing, uh, you know, then uh, between Pepsi and us and, uh, uh, yes, to some extent it is helping us also in the cross Oh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we go ahead, we would request all the participants to use their hands up for optimum audio quality in the conference. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Gupta from Varinium Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. <coughs> yeah, so uh, my question is regarding the capital structure, how we are looking forward for the next three, four years. Right, how much debt we are including and how much equity we are putting up. So uh, over the years, you know, our debt is increasing. If you just see the last two to three years, the debt is increasing significantly. Right, and uh, I understand this thing that we are entering into the market where the opportunity is very huge. So the expansion part is, you know, the must. But uh, over the next two to three years, how we are looking forward? Uh, to raise the debt, as we are also putting up, you know, expanding our capacities. So, how much the cash flow we are generating? So just the estimation that we, we will not add much debt in our capital structure. Uh, yes, so, Mr. is there any benchmark, any structure you have, you know, prepared for the next two to three years that, let's say, 30, 40 percent will include from our internal accruals and then the rest will be from that. So that's something uh, kind of question I have. Uh, sure. Uh, see, uh, in the past we had uh, enough, you know, debate on this and uh, any time for the last three, two, three years you must have noticed uh, four years that our debt EBITDA is around one, one and a quarter and the debt equity mm -hmm. is half, 0.6, 0.7. And uh, uh, after one or two uh, months, once, you know, the season is over, because uh, the, uh, this uh, ratio will be at the same level. You know, when I made this statement, in a couple of months, we'll be amortizing debt, which we have uh, taken for these three plants uh, in the current year of 1200, plus uh, we have taken for South Africa, will be at the same level of December. So ratio automatically takes care. How in return we get is, perpetual EBITDA increase with the company and uh, increase in the equity portion, uh, retained earnings. However, uh, through this uh, debt in the interim, yes, we have to take. And uh, that always has helped us in enhancing the return for our uh, stakeholders with uh, very healthy uh, uh, ROI. And uh, we are conscious of the fact that it should not go beyond uh, acceptable levels. And uh, thanks for your suggestion, and we are within that. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, with this uh, three greenfield expansion, what's the estimation of your uh, cash flow generation from this? How we are looking 
forward around 5000 crore of uh, cash flow uh, in terms of cash flow from operations as we are currently around hardly uh, 2500 uh, so that when, you know uh, that that reduction will be there well uh, it's a little difficult to uh, you know calculate that way uh some are you know these are integrated plans with the backward integration some on the profitability side and certain maybe with the uh, two out of these are with the aseptic packaging line which are capable of producing tropicana as well as uh, cream pel where uh, you know uh, in one there is no uh, royalty payment uh, so all these are slightly difficult but at you know that granular level uh, on the phone it becomes uh, difficult but however uh, i can only say that uh, debt levels are well within the norms and much better position than our stated position on our website okay okay so further for uh, expansion as you said uh, for a calendar year it's fine sorry calendar year 25 you said june will be uh, the time you will announce some capex for the cy 25 so That's so right. what's what's the plan for the again same question for the debt structure if you are raising again or uh, that will be internal accrual uh well uh, you know all this uh, debt amortization or all expansion in the, uh, from 19 to 24 in last five years has been only from internal accruals and uh, all ratios of debt equity and debt beta remain the more or less at the same level or sometimes they have shown improvement only so uh, will be from internal accruals only but however sometimes in the short run the, there may be boring this may be supported through the boring uh, because you have to incur the capex first and then uh, from the very first year itself from april may june you start uh, realizing and brings it to a comfortable level so we study our balance sheet in two parts actually one is when we incur the capex where assets are put to use that's in december and uh, june is when we are actually put to use and amortize part of debt therefore was the comment that let's wait uh, till june okay thanks thanks for the explanation thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sanjaya satpati from Ampersand Capital, please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, so my question is that uh, the cream mill you were giving some uh, color that uh, the de- there was some delay in uh, starting the factory. Can you just uh, complete that part? No, it's there. The delay was because of the Red Sea and all that. Instead of starting in January, it started in March. so but it is before the season and it's running very well and we are uh, practically doubling our capacity understood and uh, so uh, this south africa plant uh, which will be completely merged uh, and uh, the full impact of it will come from this june quarter uh, have you kind of given any idea about uh, how much your depreciation amortization cost and other cost will go up by uh south africa basically is the uh, you know the franchise rights acquisition cost uh balance uh, the assets value is not that large so depreciation they will not go up but uh, depreciation actually ideally has to be seen on the console level where in, uh, in the last 5 years balance sheet if you will see as a percentage to uh, revenue the percentage is uh, coming down last year Uh, for, it has come as low as 4.2 percent uh, of our uh, as a percentage to our uh, top line, which uh, you know earlier years it used to be 7-8 percent or 9 percent. So this improvement is very healthy and uh, uh, it's a good percentage. I mean we have on this parameter really delivered in the past. so so will the amortization go up a lot or i mean i just wanted to understand the impact cost impact of uh, south africa if at all it is there no it will not have because it uh, will contribute uh, maybe anything uh, of 16 1800 or 2000 crore uh, top line so uh, i mean it will have its own ebitda it's a positive profit making uh, operation with a huge top line so it will not increase as a percentage 
Okay, and last thing if I can ask uh, that uh, you mentioned that uh, you uh, that uh, you have uh, no plan to immediately use brands like Rockstar that is there in South Africa uh, in India. Just trying to understand what all synergy benefit that you can you are really looking at. I I, I believe that you are looking. You are saying that it will give us two quarters, but uh, just understanding the thought process. The, uh, the the Rockstar brand belongs to PepsiCo, so we have to align with them to uh, you know with their strategy to launch the same in India. Basically, this is a brand energy drink uh, category for, to address the premium category, which is very niche, and they have to be convinced uh, that that much market exists in India. Understood. Thanks a lot, sir, and uh, thanks a lot for all the details. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, hi, Mr. Gandhi. And, uh, uh, good afternoon. Yeah, very, very good afternoon. Uh, just wanted to ask uh, one question. Uh, 2025, barring uh, the calendar year of uh, 25, barring any acquisition, uh, really speaking, uh, that year should mark the beginning of a very favorable operating and financial leverage for us. Uh, is that right? Uh, you are saying uh, the uh, acquisition for the next year, 25, you are saying? No, no. I am saying, assuming no significant acquisition occurs in 2025, and uh, okay, we will be digesting the current acquisition of BEPO that we have made. Assuming no further acquisition in 2025, uh, then 2025 uh, onward should offer a period of uh, once again very favorable operating and financial leverage to us as our acquisitions will get digested and will scale them. Uh, very rightly put it up by you. In fact, very true. And uh, this resonates with my earlier answer that in a couple of months, the capex made by the company in this calendar year plus uh, Berco, uh, this thing will be amortized uh, already. And uh, after that, the, any addition in the debt is going to be for the capex of 25 only. Uh, very correct. Or maybe uh, after a couple of months, a residual year, maybe four or five months, or, which will be left of the current year, uh, part of that will be net out of the uh, cash retention from those four or five months operations. Uh, and if the capex we uh, advance, then maybe slightly it goes up. Otherwise, uh, you know, without any new M&A for 25, uh, the debt should not substantially change from uh, 23 end by the 24 end. However, my EBITDA coming from these three plants and coming from five plants of South Africa should start contributing a lot. And DRC should, should start contributing a lot. Yes. So in a way, a kind of... Uh flow through model, uh, very favorable virtuous cycle that we witnessed earlier, where top line to operating profit to the, uh, after the financial leverage uh, into the cash profit due to depreciation, a kind of a favorable virtuous cycle, uh, what we witnessed for uh, preceding period of two, three years. Something like that uh, hopefully should begin in uh, next year onwards. In fact, uh, this is what we are demonstrating for the last uh, several years, and uh, this is what uh, we always plan. But in the short run, little bit here and there, it's always possible. See, what happens is the uh, if there is a demand growth in the market, so we must prepare and uh, make every endeavor that we don't lose our share by advancing the capex. At the same way, if uh, uh, internationally some opportunity comes up, uh, we should not delay it, uh, the uh, m and and uh, temporarily uh, support the cash flow to the boring. But, uh, of course, we have to be very cognizant of the fact, one, that we do not spoil our stated ratios. Secondly, uh, we are confident in a 
period of uh, 12 to 18 months, we are going to come back to the original strict levels. Uh, without doubt. Uh, I think what has been achieved uh, so far has been uh, really commendable on each acquisition in each move, but uh, always is the heart is greedy, a dilmange more. So it was only from that point of view. And, uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Jepudia is uh, uh, smiling, he's amused from <laughs> this statement and adopting our uh, face lines. Thank you very much. Jepudia ji, namaskar. Hope you are fine. Namaskar ji. Namaskar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suchita Katke from IWELS. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, so my question was mainly on the line of DRC. So just wanted to understand what kind of volumes can we potentially do in that region and how big is that market? That market is quite large, but unfortunately, it's not a very, uh, the numbers are not very clear in that market, but it's a hundred and more than hundred million population and warm climate. We have put two large lines and our capacity is about 35 to 40 million cases is what we can produce. So we hope to do well. And as soon as our plant starts by the end of this quarter, we will really see how well we do and how fast we can grow that market. Uh, okay, sir. And so similarly with South Africa, uh, I, uh, uh, sorry if I've missed it, but how big is that market and how much volume can we do there potentially? South Africa is close to a billion case market. It's a huge market and our Pepsi share is only to two percent practically so there is huge room there although we have our own brands where we are doing well and another 12 percent market share is that but as a market it's a very big market and we have huge scope to grow and we have five plants okay uh and so can you give me the capacity of these plants all together well you know there is enough capacity but they have they were not maintained very well, so we are correcting them. And by September, before the season starts, we will have enough capacity to uh, grow the market. And whatever corrections are needed, we will grow it, uh, do it before the season starts. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take this as the last question for today, which is from the line of Saket Mehrudra from Tusk Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, could you give us uh, any sense on uh, how much uh, contribution in our sales is right now coming from quick commerce? If you could just like give us some uh, understanding about how that channel is evolving. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the quick commerce or the e-commerce is uh, still, uh, you know, is not very prominent in the, uh, our uh, segment. It's very little and uh, we have not tracked here uh, that minutely uh, because uh, it's not that important. But uh, as in men, uh, you know, some more data on this is available to share. Okay. And uh, any, uh, any sense in terms of growth? Uh, well, I understand maybe the contribution right now is insignificant, but if you can give us a sense on what kind of growth is coming from this channel. Yeah, once we get the, uh, you know, more data at that level, we will definitely be sharing. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. As that was the last question, I would now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would you like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our investor relations team. Thank you once again for your interest and support and for taking the time out to join us on this call. Look forward to interacting with you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Varun Beverages Limited, that concludes this conference. 
We thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.